sink sense and look at it through other people's eyes. Take some time and reflect on what you believe in your soul. Cause that is the key to life. You gotta let the negativity go. Hello and welcome to the What the Fox podcast with your two hosts, Lindsay Fox and Amber Ross. Here on What the Fox, we deconstruct social norms to build better lives. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking with a very special guest, Benjamin Diesel, about overcoming stumbling blocks and keeping life enjoyable while chasing after your goals. Lindsay, do you want to introduce our friend? Yes, I would be more than happy to. So, hey, Benjamin. Uh, we have got Benjamin, who goes by Benjamin Diesel Donlow, um, and his brand is actually known as diesel Donlow, so that might be what is most familiar to our listeners um we will include information about him in our show notes ps but benjamin is uh, a model and actor he's a motivational speaker and entrepreneur and he produces a ton of inspirational content for people of all ages and so we're bringing him on today just to hear a little bit more about his story and what has brought inspiration into your life so welcome benjamin <clears throat> It's my joy. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. I've been spending a little bit of time going through some of your content and I'm, I'm actually pretty excited to hear. I'm always excited to hear from our guests, but super pumped to hear about how you got started and sort of where you fit in, but it wouldn't be a, what the Fox episode if we didn't start with, how did you two meet? <laughs> uh, social media. Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> social media. <laughs> no, yeah, it's true. It's true. No, Benjamin, media. he he had um, learned about what the fox through social media. No, it's true. He had learned about what the fox through social media, and we started talking from there. And he was like, "Yeah, I'd love to come onto the podcast." So that's sort of where things kind of came came to fruition for today's recording. I love yeah, that. I saw your I saw the um, the podcast page, and I was like, I want to you know support and you know help out. That's awesome. Well, we're thrilled to have you here, of course. Um, and I know, I know you're heavily involved in the fitness space and wellness and inspiration and encouragement. And mm -hmm. I think what, what I love, and I was talking to Lindsay about this a little bit earlier today. So often I see in the wellness industry that hustle culture and that no pain, no gain mentality, and that, um, just, push until you cannot push anymore. And what I get from your content and your message is quite the opposite. And honestly, like I'm in the wellness industry as well. And we need more of what you're sharing because it's so toxic to see folks go to the point of complete exhaustion and sickness and illness in the pursuit of health. Right. It makes no sense. Yeah. Um, I, I just believe that, you know, you got to take baby steps and master just what you can, you know, to stay where you can do. And um, when you push yourself that much, you know, it can hurt your body temple more than you're gaining from it. And I'm not saying don't push it. Sometimes, you know, you got to, you, you got to test the limits. It's it's <laughs> so it's days that, you know, I might do yoga twice a day. And yeah. then, then some days I might only do like a baby, like a yin yoga or something slower, right. you know, you got to balance your body. So you're not always, you know, going a hundred miles per hour. You're just cruising sometimes. And then you That's accelerate right. up to the next level when you need it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I think maybe some good background information for some of our listeners to know um, is that you're not just someone who chooses to work out for the heck of it. This is actually someone that you've really kind of um, has been a part of your identity for a long time uh, since early, you know, I would say from your early years, um, and then now even with what you're studying. So can you share with our audience just so they understand, like in terms of the role of, of sports in your life, and then sort of how that evolved into what you're studying in school? Um, so I uh, played basketball. So I don't know you did you too? I don't think you played basketball. I think you mentioned you didn't play sports, right? No, I was not a sports person at all. I was definitely the art person. <laughs> Amber, you were. Um, I consider myself an athlete now. In previous years, I would have laughed at you if you threw that term at me. But no, I've never played organized <laughs> sports. <laughs> well, I played some organized sports growing up. And I played football, basketball, track, ran, you know, did everything I could, baseball. Everything. Uh, but ba basketball was my, you know, core, you know, that was my one I really uh, loved. Uh, I loved 
just sound of the basketball, just dribbling and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, so uh, during basketball, we always worked out. We was always running. You know, obviously, if you're a basketball player, you always ran. You know, so mm -hmm. I'm used to running my whole entire life. Yes. So, um, when and I were all of college, too, right? Well, two years of college, I played two years and then uh, the disconnection came. I think we talked about that before. Uh, I just felt the love has wasn't there after uh, the two years. I didn't get up like having a burning desire to play. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And once that desire is gone, I knew it was time for me to, you know, move on uh, to the next thing. And that was the, that was hard. That was probably the hardest thing because my whole entire life I was just playing sports and playing basketball. So that's like what I was my identity was like if you knew mm -hmm. me. Like people now didn't even know I played basketball. They were like, did you, you play basketball? Like, so they didn't even know I was good at basketball. At one point in my life, I was really good. Uh, really uh, could have went far with it, but I just didn't have the desire to do that. Uh, so during that like transition, when I had stopped playing in college, I started training, going into the gym, start training my friends, start still doing like basketball type workouts. But now I'm just doing it just to keep in shape. Cause once you stop playing sports, you don't do that type of, cardio or type of exercise every day so yeah, i had to like, not the structure anymore no structure i had to create my structure again so mm -hmm. uh, i started training myself and just started look up how to do it started training some people like my friends would come and work out so i'm just practicing on them using them as guinea pigs <laughs> <laughs> hey you gotta love a good friend that's like yep yeah, you can test yeah. it on me <laughs> yeah I, I tested on about three or four of them uh they that's gave me an opportunity to help them out lose weight it was working so i was like all right Bet I could do it, but I didn't do it right then. It took me about a year or two to gain some confidence. And uh, I started training people like in 2015, beginning of 2015. I said, I'm going to do it. Hell or high water. I'm going to do yeah. it. And uh, I remember I went to school because I was in my senior year and they, uh, the teacher asked everyone, what did you do over break? And I was so embarrassed to tell everybody I started training people that I just said, I don't know why I felt like so embarrassed because not everyone was doing it at the yeah, time. Yeah. Like. My yeah. classmates were all, man, I'm working at, I'm working at this fortune 500 company. Mm -hmm. I had an internship, you know, this, and I, I'm like, all right, let me lie real quick. I said that I'm working, <laughs> with, let me, I'm working with my uncle. I started, he started a new business. So I kind of lied and said, my uncle started a business, uh, yeah. but I was lying. It was really me starting. The gravity of, yeah, you started your own business. <laughs> like yeah. you weren't working for someone. You were doing the damn thing. Mm -hmm. Like you yeah. stepped out. I, I wasn't, I wasn't like that confident yet. Like, yeah. I mean, just because like scary. It's identity. Yeah, exactly. That's a scary yeah. to step out on the ledge like that. When at one point you identified as this, this ball player, everyone kind of knew you in that way. And then you're, you're taking this risk of saying, I'm going to pivot and not really sure where you're going to land. I mean, it's a, it's a big, it's a big risk to put yourself out there in hopes of being accepted um, and, and that in thriving, you don't, you know, so there's a lot of stuff like that where we have a lot of self-imposed pressures as well, particularly when you shifted out of something that you're really good at. Exactly. So I had that type of pressure worrying about what extrinsic motive, extrinsic things were going on instead of thinking about what I wanted to do. Um, that, that was like kind of, but once I got through that stage right there, like the week or two later, I was like, whatever, I'm going to do it. I started posting content, started creating content, started getting clients, mm -hmm. started meeting people, started getting them white, right? And um, just really got into it. And then um, I kind of stepped away from it. I just bit. want to say real fast, like for our listeners, like you have a, about 100,000 followers now. Yeah. So this isn't like, you know, you just kind of willy nilly started it and you have a few followers type of thing, but you've really accrued quite a following with, you know, with your inspirational content and what kind of services you offer. Yeah, I was very grateful uh, just because um, I, like I said, like I never did it for the numbers, but I know that you need to have a big impact on this, on this planet. So that comes with, you know, having an impact on this planet. So uh, when I started training people, I ended up taking a break, but I still was training a little bit. I uh, kind of took a little break because I was my acting started picking up, started doing stunts. I started doing influencer work. I started doing like all of these type of type of things. And then mm -hmm. probably the last two years, I really got into yoga. That's my thing now. I love yoga. That's yeah, that's your jam. I mean, there's so much, honestly, for you to get involved in that right with, within the pandemic, um, I think that makes a lot of sense because yoga is all about that mind mind body connection and and so many of us were kind of um caught off guard with the pandemic and and needing to 
you know, get recentered in some kind of way during lockdown and what have you. So it makes sense how you might have fallen into that. But can we rewind a little bit and just talk about where in the world this whole um, shift into like you have your business, but then you mentioned like, oh, you're acting and modeling stuff started to take off. Like, where did that even pop in? Like, where did that where did the acting thing come in? <laughs> like, how did we go from like being a ball player to um, all of a sudden shifting into having your own business to now pursuing the entertainment industry? Um, honestly, it started a little bit before even that. Now I'm thinking about it. My mom took us to a casting call, like at one of these agencies, like about an hour away. And I didn't make, I, don't, I guess it didn't work out or whatever, but that mm -hmm. was the first time I was exposed to it. And then a year before I really, like 2013, 2014, I went to an agency and um, took some pictures and they didn't really do nothing with it. So I was like, all right, see, I tried, you know. Mm -hmm. And then like the third time was when I was in studying abroad in Chile. This is 2015. And when I was studying abroad, I knew I had something bigger to do. You know, I knew mm -hmm. training was just a stepping point, you know, like to mm -hmm. yep. me getting out to the, like the, the main things like of my life. So I really like, kept asking, you know, whatever you call it, universe, God, uh, I just spoke to, to God and asked him for guidance. Like what, what's next for me? What's going to emerge? What's, I know I have something bigger to, to do. So like I was creating my YouTube content and you probably, I don't know if you guys saw that, like I was messing around and you like, I don't know. I tried that and it was like, cool, but I was like producing my content, creating content, you know, making videos and stuff like that. But when I got back from Chile, when I was in Chile, I started seeing acting like films, mm. commercials, like seeing like it was just like highlighted, like it was big, like it looked like really big, like to me. And I couldn't like like how your screens are like highlighted in the back. I can just see you. That's how it was like with the acting stuff. You know, what I mean, I'm sure we all experienced that in your life where you just seen things bigger than when, mm. you know, just like playing back and you see it more. So I knew when I came home. I was going so to do you that. had an awakening, basically. It sounds like you yes. went to Chile and you kind of had an awakening. <laughs> yeah, I was in South America, man. I love, I, like I said, I love South America. So, and you got um, some. Do you have some roots there? I feel like it in my spirit. I do. Yeah, I was going to say there's definitely something there that really woke up your soul in some way, for sure. I, I went down there, and then the Chileans were very receptive, you know, to what I were doing. And yeah, I remember we went to. If you look on my YouTube, I have a video where. We went to like some type of place and all the, all the kids came up to me like, can we get an autograph? Are you famous? Oh. <laughs> like, Who are you? You know, they're like, I'm on school. my way. <laughs> well, in my mind, I was like, I'm there though. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. That's how you I manifest. Am today. That's right. how you yeah. manifest right there is you, I love you it. have that I am mentality. Absolutely. But they came up to me and just showed me a lot of love and what do you do? You know, what are you here for? I was like, hey, I'm here to inspire you. That's all I could say, you know, <laughs> oh, I love it. So, so thank God for those people for, uh, yeah. really embracing me, give me confidence. So when I came home, I was like, I'm being, I'm going to be on set on and fire. First, first set I did was June 17th, 2016, somewhere around that date. And I had to be there at 4 42 in the morning. <laughs> I don't forget Very the specific. date. Time. <laughs> yeah. So that was my first set ever. And I get on and set. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I get on set and it's like, everything's like, tch, 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 tch. you know what I mean? Like just fast, mm -hmm. just too fast. Yeah. So, um, and then, you know, I went on set and a lot of people gave me advice on how to take it to, you know, the next level. Well, not just the next level here, but I mean, let's, I know that you're being a little bit humble, but you have appeared on shows like Empire, Chicago PD, um, Canal Street, and, and a number of other shows. So this hasn't just been like a couple of little, little gigs, but you've managed to kind of work your way up there and, and you're doing stunt work. I mean, all kinds of stuff. So really the awakening meant something. I mean, it's clearly put you on a path towards something. I never thought about the awakening. Now that I'm looking like that, you made me like highlight that. Like it's probably was an awakening. It I mean, was. something seriously shifted in that time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I there's a probably in that sentence. I, I definitely <laughs> think it was because your whole life shifted, right? You came back with a new energy. You came back with a new focus. You came back with that drive and that ambition. And it was targeted. 
it was no longer, you know, I'm here to do something bigger. It's I'm here to do this thing and do this thing really well. Exactly. Exactly. And like, when I do things, I want to do be the best. And like, even though I had like, people don't realize how many auditions I, I did and not get it. And that really helped me build confidence. Cause I'm like, okay, if I don't get it, I don't, you don't like me, dude. Okay, cool. It's another person that would love me. They'll love to have mm-hmm. me on their show and to be a part of something special, but I had a lot of people that helped me, you know, on the way. Do you want to talk about who those people were kind of what their influence was on you? How did, how did the inspirational person get inspired? (laughs) Well, listen, let's go, let's take it back. My cousin, let's do it. Let's let's take it back. Let's take it back a minute. My cousin, Chris Harrison, shout out to my cousin, Chris Harrison. Uh, He really, um, he was a football player in our local community here in Ohio, Youngstown. Played football division one in Cincinnati uh, for the University of Cincinnati, and uh, he really inspired me to like, okay, I can, I can be something in basketball. You know what I mean? Like I could take get division one scholarships or whatever division two scholarships, and just have a lot of you know that type of inspiration. And uh, he didn't want to help me create the name Diesel Donlow. So. Oh, oh, so I he's like an, he's like an OG. <laughs> OG, he graduated 2000. He's a year older than you, I believe. Hey, we're not talking Whoa. about my age. Whoa! <laughs> no, no, not, no, I'm, I'm saying he's not much older. I'm so teasing. I'm so teasing you. I'm just he's ragging you. He's not much right older. Now. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm he's like that young, sideways. He's like a <laughs> young OG. He's like a right, young, young, young OG. Right, 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 okay, right, we're just right, drawing right. the distinction that OG does not <laughs> indicate old. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it is right. original. Yeah. Original. Yeah. Right. And I'd yeah. like to say age is a state of mind. Just for just for clarity here. Anyone who's listening, I don't give a shit how old you are, but it's all a state of mind. Mm-hmm. So so who else kind of inspired you along the way? I mean, clearly family has been a huge part of your life, but has there been other people um, in your life that has kind of inspired you? Because I honestly, you seem like a very faith-based or spirit-led person in some ways. So I just wonder if there's more to all of that in terms of how you have felt inspired. I mean, listen, like we all have a lot of muses, like people sure. that come into your life. Like I have so many that came in and helped. Like it's a, probably a long book I can write like, but the Maybe few people should. that I did help. I was going to say, it'll be in your memoir. Make it's a note. In <laughs> yeah, it's in there. Uh, the few people that I can say, though, was Pastor Kareem Hickman. Uh, he was my youth pastor. He helped a lot, uh, you know, being there. In Chicago? In. Yeah, he was in, in Chicago. Chicago. But he okay. lived He lived in Youngstown first. And oh, then, wow. I mean, I met him in Youngstown first. He came here from ministry. And then he went to California. And then he went back to his home state, Chicago. So when we uh, reconnected, that helped me like have a spiritual mentor just in the house and presence, you know, Um, he helped a lot. My mom was uh, very instrumental. She always taught me to be diversified. She's like, you want to be very skill set in many aspects. So that's why you probably see me do, you know, water. uh, Wait, what do you mean by water? Well, I'm on water. Well, wait, who? We don't know this. Oh, it's like. Alkaline artesian water. <laughs> oh, so part of your company, you guys also have water. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Well, I'm on... t- tell our audience about that. Okay. Yeah, where can we buy about? it? How'd you create it? What's it all about? Tell us the things, man. <laughs> okay. Don't hold back. <laughs> I mean, clearly your business like comprises a lot of different health and fitness aspects of yes. things, but now, you know, water is actually a huge part of this. So what, what's up with the water? Well, <laughs> well, like I was saying, my mom, I'm going to get to the water. Okay. We're coming back to it. We got to talk about mama first. I my respect mom, this. My lady, <laughs> I got I to gotta put her up here. You know what I'm saying? Fair, so fair. my mom is the one that really taught me like how to like think bigger, be bigger. When I was in eighth, no, when I was in six, seven, no, after my sixth grade year, you, you guys heard of AAU, you know, AAU sports, like basketball, they play yes. like traveling basketball, stuff yes. like that. Sports. It's a big organization that is very huge in the sports world and like a lot of players like LeBron James did it. Like a lot of NBA players went through the system. So I was playing AAU at this team that wasn't that good, (laughs) you know, not too far. And then coach scouted me from Cleveland after we played him, he hit my mom up saying, Hey, we want Ben to come play for our team in Cleveland. And at first I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to play my homies, you know, like that. 
my mom was like, no, we're going to Cleveland, which is Cleveland's like an hour and a half away, hour 15, hour 30. So I had to like sacrifice friendship and, and school, like at the time to yeah. go play better basketball. So I'm just saying my mom always was telling me like to do more, be more, be around better competition so you can rise your game up. It's just like, Go you big. Ladies, yeah, yeah, it's like you ladies, like being around a, what do you call OG for ladies? An OG. OG. <laughs> I don't know if you have a different name. You gotta have a different name? No. So. What? No. OG Someone works. Gotta come up with a name. Someone gotta come up with a name for ladies that's- Why that does it have to be different? Well, no, no, it's just OG just, Boss bitch, what do you want? <laughs> that one works. <laughs> but some lady that has wisdom, like you know, like it's something like a woman with wisdom and like I mean spiritual. mentors and all right, we'll know. work on this. We're gonna Next. tab it and come we'll back work to on it. it. You gotta get to that. Y'all ladies got I'm gonna table that. I'll come back to you. It's on the table. Trademark it. Trademark it. I give you some game here. All right, give you some game. Okay, anyway. Uh, back to the water, the water I created <laughs> four years ago and the water wasn't that good. <laughs> and my customers and my customers and my, you know, my people tell me that it don't taste good. It ain't good. I'm not going to just you yeah. know, put it out. So I was like, kind of like, all right, I get back to it later. <laughs> like one of those. So you tabled it and came back. I came back to it. So I didn't mess with it until like what years and now 21, 20, 22. 22. We're in 22. So oh, no. I started time doesn't exist. Dick, I started dibbling and dabbling into it around like 2020, like starting to get back into it. And then like 2021, that January I made, you know, I was like, okay, it's time. And uh, I did that. I, you know, ordered our first shipment. Uh, the team I'm with, we are all on one page. We have a great team. It's sourced right in Virginia. So uh, it's uh, American based, you know, so we support American uh, companies as well. And we are supporting like our own uh infrastructure here so I yeah love that. and um love that we're in like probably like seven to ten stores like consistently that make you know that we're mm -hmm. working with right now um we're working on getting distribution down where you to live at you live in both north carolina north carolina and massachusetts mm -hmm. massachusetts okay we're gonna get yep. the I'm trying to get there. We're getting there. All right. Come That's on down, okay. friend. That's all right. But you know, so I think another part of this though is just like the value of water and fitness. Like I think yes. I think what I want to do is like make the connection here around that because something else our listeners don't know about you is that you're actually a PhD student. So um and a certified yoga instructor. Like I, I want you to talk a little bit about like you're being a little bit humble in some areas and I sort of want to poke at you to share like what you're learning, what's it all about and um, to share about that connection and the value of why water is important and everything that you're studying and doing. So uh, you want to drink high alkalinity water because one, it promotes uh, better blood circulation in your body and it promotes uh, better well-being for you and um, it's just better for your body and your body temple. Uh, you want to eat high nutritional food so you can receive insights and receive the gifts from, you know, God. And you're able to take the inspiration you get from the spiritual aspect into your body temple. So drinking high alkalinity water helps with removing toxins, clearing the blood system, uh, drinking uh, something that's grow like it's natural. You know, you Absolutely. drink pop and all that stuff is sodium. It's a lot of sodium. It's a lot of sugar. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm not saying nothing wrong. You know, they just created something that's in their lane. Uh, but you want to drink things that are naturally like uh, type Absolutely. of products and services. And uh, my master's degree is in exercise science. And that's where I got the love for, you know, like knowing the science and knowing the uh, intricacies of, you know, how the body works, how the muscles and all that different, you know, stuff like that. And then just I'm. I would say I'm vegan, vegan-ish. I'm almost, I'm almost there. All it's right. Like things I got to clean up. I'm like, I would say I'm like 80 to 90% vegan based uh, or plant-based person now. And what once sent I, you off on that journey? I'm going to pause oh, you man. for a second. Like what, what spun that off for you? Uh, studying high-minded people, studying uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith. I'm not sure if you know who that is. Uh, spiritual guy from LA. He was in the movie, The Secret. Yep. And um, he really talks about, you know, eating right, eating clean, uh, eating, you know, healthier for the environment, for the animals. 
mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I really like started to study what these people do. And once I made that switch, I noticed that my body was performing even better than when I was younger. You know, wow. So I bring that up because there's this idea and it's one that I've come up against several times in the last few years on my own journey that athletes have to eat meat in order to be strong. And in order to build muscle, you have to be consuming animal byproducts. And like, that's a myth and it's been busted and people just haven't caught up yet. So I'm grateful that you're sharing that, like that has been part of your journey as well, because I think we need to see more of different lifestyles and different eating styles to normalize that it's not all one path for every single person. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, it's a very important part of your journey and I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. And uh, like you said, I'm glad you even, you know, uh, were receptive to that because a lot of people think when I say like plant-based or they get kind of offended, you know, if you don't no, not you, not you, but do you boo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And I'm not saying don't eat meal. You, know, you got to eat meat like like it's like a side dish, like it's like a side serving. You know, it's not a staple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know well, I mean? also, I think another part of the conversation is again when we talk about the mind body connection, is think about serotonin within in our brain. Uh, mm -hmm. We talk about serotonin and neurotransmitters as if it's always going on in our brain, but at the at its core, serotonin is what helps us with our mood, and you know helps alleviate depression and stuff like that. But it's actually all, I mean, I say all, but predominantly made in our gut. Yep. So yeah. serotonin for our mood is stored in our gut health. So this is why what we eat matters on a mind, body, soul level, because it all comes full circle. Exactly. And um, that's that's why I'm very in tune with the body now. So that's why I wanted to become, you know, that type of lifestyle. And it's a it's not a movement because movement comes and goes. Like yeah. I want things that are embodied, that's embodied in lifestyle. my lifestyle, you know? So now uh, that translated to me, you know, when I started training with yoga, that really opened up, like, I love weights and I'm never going to not stop lift. Okay. I lift once in a while now. It's like eating meat for me now. Okay. Once really? I started doing, yes. Once I started doing yoga, oh my Lord, did I wow. just feel so much better? No, like I'm not making this stuff up. Like, I believe you, you feel so much more like energy, more connected, more, yeah. more receptive. You can hear like, it's just, it enhances like little things that I didn't like think I would, you know, like I had yoga this morning and my mentor, uh, or OG woman, uh, <laughs> who taught Marianne, oh my God, she, uh, she's a phenomenal yoga instructor and yogi, um, just teaching me how to be more, do more. And it's a hot yoga class. And I, mm. I don't, when I first started training, I just did, I don't know if you ever heard yoga with Adrian. Yeah, I have. You're what you're so I have not. a little bit more slower. <laughs> no, 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 nothing wrong with it. I love Adrian. That's my girl. But she's no, a I have not more, heard of her, but Amber has. <laughs> oh yeah. She's good. She's a great, and, no, and that's still one of my mute. That's my go-to, but like she, she does different type of yoga style. And then Marianne does more of a hot power yoga class. So it's more sweaty. It's more like a hit yoga you know, like more like faster. And so like it translated my body to like moving different. Now I'm like learning different positions. So, mm. uh, I feel like yoga can help people's lifestyle and it's not just like stretching. People get this misconception. It's more of a spiritual embodiment of that's right movement and stretching and being one and being centered and being in flow with your body. Amen yeah, I love that. when people, when I suggest yoga as like a starting program for some folks as they're getting into a routine and they're like, yoga is too easy. Like I'm way past that. That's something for a rest day. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. I'm like, yes, yeah, some, yeah. Some <laughs> yoga cl classes, I would agree. Not all yoga is created equal though. <laughs> like yin yeah, yoga floor. Go ahead. Yin, it's more of a stretch. Like I would tell my, like my mom would love that. Like people that don't really want to do the fast you go to the yin yoga where you're just doing one stretch is longer, slower, more breaths, mm -hmm. all those different things. So um, I would, I would suggest like learning which type of yoga you like. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. And I, I personally love yoga and it's, it's on my list of things that I really want to increase in my life. Uh, so I was just actually looking up different yoga classes near me uh, because it's something it. that I really miss having, but 
I would say one thing, even on a therapeutic level, um, I think yoga is wonderful for is releasing you, you mentioned how there's a spiritual element to yoga, and I couldn't agree more with you on this because I believe that, um, well, the science has shown this, but trauma is stored in our body. Mm -hmm. And in terms of yoga, I do feel that it is such a healthy way to release the trauma that is stored in our body because it does do the mind body and spiritual connectivity where everything comes full circle um particularly when you think about um i don't know it's just it's it's bringing that somatic experience into your mind and making all of that connect uh so i i do recommend yoga as well just even on a therapeutic level or even within coaching my clients and it on the, the mental health space um you really can't go wrong with it exactly I agree. And I think one of the things that yoga allows people to do is to slow down and be present mm -hmm. because so often in today's world, especially the pace is so fast that you can't focus on what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you're thinking. And Benjamin, when you said you can hear things, mm -hmm. that is the moment in yoga that I feel like everybody should strive for, because that yeah. means you've turned off all of the like white noise and all of the distractors mm -hmm. and you can hear and feel and experience what you're meant to experience. Exactly. Exactly. Do you meditate as well, Benjamin? Every day. I was going to say, I feel yeah. like for you to be this involved into yoga, you have to be a meditator. Can you yeah. say a little bit more about that? <laughs> so, um, and I also do a lot of breath work too. I don't know if you guys you know what I'm talking about, Pani Rama mm -hmm. and all that stuff, uh, learning like uh, equal breathing, like when you count, you know what I'm talking about? One, two, three. And then, uh, I'm actually starting to do breath work to help heal my asthma. So I'm like, I'm right there with you in trying oh, to yeah. like pull all that together. Got a video for you. I did on you on Instagram. I'm going to send it to you. Oh yeah. Send it to me, please. I'll send it to you. Um, but meditation, uh, when I first started doing, doing it, people thought it was weird. Like my community. I and, understand. Um, what, and what I do, do you mean when you say my community? Uh, the people in my, in my, in my world that I was presently in at the time when I started, like, they were like, why are you doing that? And why are you, were are they you all like, basketball players? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, they just weren't receptive to, to this type of stuff. They were just used to going to the gym It's egotistical mm -hmm. centric type of mindset. They just weren't yeah. you know aware of, what this could really help with your lifting as well. And they don't out. know what they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but every day I meditate. Um, usually I do. I like guided meditation. Some, some days I just listen to music. Some days I just don't do it. And you don't have to sit in a fancy pose. It's not about right. being like fancy with it. And that's where it's getting like misconstrued here. I agree. You can do it just sitting right here. You can do it walking. But for me, I like to sit down. I have my yoga block. And I like to sit on that and then I like to sit against a wall. So my back is not rigid, but it's, you know, good posture, posture. good posture. Mm -hmm. And, um, cause that helps I'll, with breathing too. Yep. And some days I do breathing work. I do like the, yep. You'd have alternate. We'll have to see it on our YouTube yeah. channel. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to check out YouTube to see what he's doing. Well, I, didn't, I, didn't, fancy I never breath made, work. One, I never no, made one video yet, but I'm just giving you like, you know, <laughs> yeah. ideas. Some days you yeah. want to do breath work because that brings like your breath down. It brings an equanimity to your life as well. So I would recommend everyone doing meditation. I absolutely agree with you. There are so many healing properties of meditation across the board. I mean, and there's a ton of, I mean, even just mindfulness meditation is something there's been so much money poured into this in terms of funding uh, research around it, especially with veterans. Um, it is amazing how mindfulness and meditation can influence our ability to restore our sense of wellness and just our state of being. Facts. And I think it's really obvious, at least now that we've spent some time talking with you um, and learning a little bit about your story, that every aspect of every adventure you have your hands on, right? Because like outsider looking in, we look at your social media and we're like, holy crap, Benjamin does everything. Like he does right. a little of this, a little of that. How does it all come together? 
I feel like, and you can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, it all comes together because you are raising awareness to how the different areas are connected to individual wellness, right? From the water, from the meditation, from the breath work, from um, taking the time to bring comedy and humor into everyday life and being being a light in the um, acting world, because I know that can sometimes be a very toxic and very hard environment. So I can see how it's all interwoven. Yeah. um, It's all one thing to me. Like, I wish if we were on set, I wish we could do yoga and meditation before we start. Like if when if I ever direct a film and and I well one day I will. One day when when that's well, I, <laughs> something, I got a project coming out that I'm working two projects. This like I'm funding it. I'm me and this guy partner up and we're creating some movies and creating a document like a little inspirational documentary type thing. But anyway, so I am gonna do some like do that this year. Uh, probably around August, September, we're going to start filming that. Uh, but anyway, when I'm on set, like I feel like everyone, we should do yoga and meditation before we start. Before we even get going to the, the everyone going like this. Mm-hmm. Let's slow down. Beautiful. Yep. And let's Beautiful. Start. step into your body for a second. Yeah, because I was on set last week and it was, I'm just looking around like, and I see, inner, like I could see these things now. My mind see energy, like, right? So, you can see yeah. the energy. Yeah. I know that sounds wacky, but people who meditate and get really into that spiritual practice, you can see the energy. I can feel it too, you know. Yes. And, and I'm like, okay, let me go sit back down. Put on <laughs> some, uh, let me just get my mind right. No, no, for real. And I have to like. No, I believe you. Like the frenetic <laughs> energy is like it can create heart palpitations. <laughs> like I get, I get stressful. to work early. I get there earlier than when I'm supposed to be there because. I need to fill out the energy before I walk into work. So like before I go to the yoga studio, I am I try to be the first one there, not for competition, but for, for me to fill out the energy of the room, fill mm. the vibes of the room. Let me just make sure I'm ready to take in this experience, you know? So when it's uh, an opportunity to reset the energy as well, right? Because when you bring your high, vi- high vibration to that space, it shifts everything for everyone Oh, it's else. a game changer. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. And another thing that I want you ladies and your uh, listeners to do is uh, I, I do scripting and I'm not sure if you ever did done that journaling scripting. Oh, oh yes. Journaling, journaling. So, yes. But it's, it's really called scripting, uh, but it's a form of journal. You know, when you script, you're basically, and you basically are. So I give you an example. I do three parts and I'm giving you some game. I hope, cause I want people to use this. So I do three parts of my scripting. <laughs> Yeah, she's part, taking notes. Man, <laughs> first, I got this. <laughs> the first part of the scripting, I always write the date in Portuguese because I speak Portuguese. So like I always write my date on there. You know, today is this day. And then I put uh, the quote of the day for me. Whatever quote, like I, I always try to find like meta, whoever, whoever inspires mm-hmm. me. So yeah. right now I'm looking up Neville Gardard. So that's the guy that I'm studying right now in his quotes. So I'm using him. And then I do my affirmation that I always do. I'm not sure if you study Bob Proctor. No, not personally, but I'd love to hear whatever your affirmation is. He says like, so I do, I do the quote and then I do my affirmation. So your affirmation might be, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm experiencing yoga. It feels so amazing to be embodied around that community of yoga people man, it feels so, I feel so good when I think about yoga. You might write that for your affirmation or like you, Amber, you might write, I'm so happy and grateful that my asthma is uh, depleted. I feel so good when I breathe. (laughs) Anytime I breathe in positive, I breathe in positive energy that helps my lungs breathe even better than before. Like stuff like that. You might want to say something, Yeah. whatever you want to affirm. And then I'm claiming that energy. Absolutely. The paper. It's speaking it into existence. I mean, you, exactly. you claim it. Absolutely. I write like, I write it like a few times, like 10 oh, times. Oh, wow. For y'all who cannot see and our listeners on like Spotify and Apple, he's showing us like pages upon pages of, of written content for all of this. That's amazing. <laughs> so you want to do that every day. And then the next thing, this is, that was part one. Oh, that's wow. like the introduction. I would okay. say that's introduction. Part one is now you're talking about 
what your goals are. So you might be like, oh, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm achieving wellness. I'm achieving losing weight. I'm achieving whatever your goals are. My business is striving. The podcast is growing. Blase, blase, blah, whatever you want. But you always want to say that. I'm so happy and grateful now that because you want to yeah. get in a state of gratitude. Absolutely. And Part two is when you're going into now, you're going more of a, um, what's part two? Okay, hold on. Part one is that. Part two is more like, uh, hold on, give me a second. It's coming. All right. Um, it's more, okay, let me go to part three because I know part three and I come back. Part three, the last part is you're thanking God for being uh, opening doors for you, connected to you and allowing you to breathe and breath and just thanking God for blessing you with what you already have. And part two is um, basically telling the, telling like how you want to feel. I want to feel good today. I can't mm -hmm. wait to be around confident people, man, Amber, I can't wait to do a podcast with Amber. She's going to bring so much great energy, great vibes to the show today. I, I say it every time. <laughs> I can't wait to meet with my clients today because today they're going to share something to me so I can help them grow. And before I do this podcast with Benjamin, I'm going to, you know, just wish him well and his family, like, or whatever you want to, whatever you want to experience yeah. for that day, how you want to feel. And Claim then the, last the outcome. Part, yes. Exactly. And express so, gratitude. Absolutely. So you do that. I do that every day. What I just told you wow. every single day. And so that's part of my scripting is, and I learned that from uh, a great muse. Her name is Ashley Ducey. And that's who I learned from. Ashley Ducey. That's amazing. I've seen that methodology presented a lot of different ways. Um, so it's semi-familiar to me, but I love that you work that into your daily practice. I love that you focus on, I think too often we use affirmations in a way that makes us feel like we are frauds because mm -hmm. people will have an affirmation that's like, I'm rich, I'm successful, I'm powerful. I'm, and it's very like surface level yeah. and your brain immediately rejects the idea. Your brain is just like, what? Yeah. Get, get specific. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get out of here. So I love the way that you've talked about your scripting because those affirmations, like I'm so happy and grateful that I'm breathing more easily. Like I'm so that puts your brain and your body into more of a connection. And it's actually really, really beneficial. Yep. Hey, that's a pun. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, but I love dad. Jokes. It is. Like, it was, know, it was a know. good dad joke. It was an unintentional <laughs> dad joke and it was a good one. Um, no, I love it. And I'm so grateful you took the time to share that with us. You we've spent, I don't know, almost an hour chatting with you. And I just want to make sure that, um, if there was a last thing you wanted to share with the listeners, if there was like a big idea that you wanted them to take away from this, that you have an opportunity to share that. Wow. Um, to always, uh, be you, you know, to, to work hard. I mean, not hard. You want to work efficient. You want to work smarter, not harder, but uh, to just be you and to, you know, don't listen to what anyone says, you know, listen to what your, you know, body tells you the body never lies and um, intuition never lies mm -hmm. and to study. And I have to say some books recommendations before I get off. Yeah, please do. Yes. We would love that. So these are like, five books. Where's my notebook? There my book. Okay. I, I think I know the name of the author. First one is Florence Scovel Shen, The Game of Life and How to Play It. I would read that. That's a good one. She's, she was from New York or New Jersey. Uh, Catherine Ponder, Dynamic Laws of Prosperity. She speaks like real, like old school, real like, I love that. Um, the secret and Michael Bernard Beckwith, uh, life visioning. Those are four I would recommend, you know, reading if it. you have time. So when we have time, I'm putting those on my list. I love, <laughs> um, audio books personally. <laughs> I like, I walk on and YouTube. listen. It's free. Um, yeah. It's free on YouTube. Oh, Absolutely. really? Wow. The, game, the okay. one that I first told you, Florence Scovel Shen, the game of life and how to play it is free on YouTube. Nice. Well, there Perfect. you go. Our listeners can tune in then. 
Thank you so much, Benjamin. We are so grateful that you spent time with us today. I know you dropped a lot of wisdom and shared some really great energy with us. So I cannot tell you um, how know. grateful that makes me. <laughs> Maybe he should be a philosopher. <laughs> Maybe like he honest. already is. <laughs> Maybe he is, but he's just got to, you know, push it out there and claim it. All right. No, mm-hmm. thank you, ladies, for letting me be a bright presence on your podcast. Thank you for allowing me to share wisdom and motivation to your community as well. Yeah, thank you so much for joining. We look forward to seeing all these upcoming projects you're working on. You've got a lot of big stuff in the making. So well I'm done. I'm seeing what you guys are doing. Hopefully, you know, we we come up with some later down the line. Oh, we'll we'll be collaborating. It'll happen. No doubt about that. <laughs> you're stuck with us now, Benjamin. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm good with it. I'm good he's with stuck it. Stuck with us well, now. I love people that work. You know, I love being around high energy. You know, high vibrational people. That's right. That's what we're all about. I mean, honest to goodness, we've we've all been through our stuff in life, and at the end of the day, it's just it's how do we move forward and be the best that we can be. And next time I uh, next time I talk to you ladies on a video or whatever, I mean I'll probably talk to you, you know, off of off of this. We'll talk. Thing. Yeah. But next time I see the asthma will be gone with you, Amber. I'm claiming that. Or close or whatever you're gonna be able to manage it, whatever level you wanna get to. And uh you, I want I, I wanna see more uh the yoga. Yes, Ooh, sir. Yes, yes, sir. I'm you here got for it. that. You got it. <laughs> Well, Thank I want to see, I want to see your children's books and all these other things that you got going on. And we didn't even talk about all that stuff, but we're, Next time. I'm claiming, I'm claiming the same thing for you, my friend. <laughs> children's yeah, think- done. That story's done, but just got to uh, get the person to draw it up. I know. I know person. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> we'll talk later. Connection made. <laughs> oh, see? <laughs> see? All right. Uh, yeah. Oh, my, my pleasure. Goodness. All right, Ben, thank you. So, or excuse me, Benjamin. I'm sorry. My brother's name is Benjamin and he goes by Ben. So I keep calling you Ben, but thank okay. you so much for joining uh, What the Fox podcast. And for our listeners, please check out our show notes for extra details on how to get in touch with Benjamin and to check out his company, Diesel Donlow. You can find him on Instagram for those who love the social media world. So with that being said, we will see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. And we all say Everything is gonna be just fine It's gonna fall into place The sun is gonna set on your terrible day